Hey folks, DC7 here, and welcome back to my channel. Got a really nice little game here for you from Deck 18. Now this is called Transocean, the shipping company. And it is a tycoon game based on the shipping industry, oddly enough. So, uh, yeah, we have a water-based tycoon game. You, uh, this is our world map, at least this is our current world map. And you have, you know, the UK, most of Europe, and, eh, very tip of, very tip of South Africa, like Algiers, and that sort of thing, Port Said. These are all real ports that they use in the game. There is apparently 55 world harbors. So as you can see, this map is going to get considerably bigger. Once you've unlocked a certain amount of stuff on this part of it, it expands and eventually I think you get pretty much the whole world. So let's kind of uh, jump in. I'm not... Uh, there we go. I'm not going to do this as a tutorial. This is just a quick look at how the game works, you know, and what you can expect for your for your money. So here we are. We are in St. Petersburg on what appears to be quite a foggy morning. And, uh... Ah, I'm just doing some upgrades to my ship. That's why it says ready in four days. So, yeah. Let's, uh allow that four days to pass one there we go and we'll hold it you can see how quick our money was going down they charge you twelve thousand dollars a day to moor your ship in the harbor this is my ship here and uh, that's pretty much real life stuff any for every minute that a ship sits in a harbor that harbor charges them an arm and a leg it's uh it has a very clean, nice to work with interlace. Um, this is my ship status. I'm currently full on fuel. I'm at 64%. Oh, 21,000 euro a day to dock here. I'm sorry, the 12,000 was the last port I was at. This is a little more expensive. The name of my ship is the Cranberry. Um, oddly enough, when you go to name a ship, there's a randomize. And it came up with this. Now that just happens to be the name of the little town I live in, so I thought it'd be easy to remember. Um, this is the smallest of the vessels. You start with a choice of three. Um, so there you go. I have no cargo on board. And I am full of fuel. So let's find ourselves a contract. Here is our list of contracts. Now, generally what you kind of want to do is find some reasonably lucrative contracts that uh, are either going to the same port or kind of close. Uh, there's a couple of good ones. So, neither of these are time constraint. So we'd be looking at set. Yeah, we can do those. So we're going to take this post and parcel and this metals. Whoops. Apparently. Uh, that's at that speed. It will take more than we've got today eh, for fuel. Let's try that. 500. Okay. Yeah, that one we wouldn't make it at all. We'd actually run out of fuel. So 27 days. Ooh, we're going to end up paying late on those. So see what else we've got here. So my ship isn't all that fast right now. Well, we can take two loads of logs. They're not nearly as lucrative. To Stockholm. Which, uh... Wouldn't take us much fuel, but it's going to take us quite a ways. Oh, and these are... Yeah, I can't make Stockholm in six days. Sorry, guys. Dublin, Algiers, Port Said. Hmm? Let's have a look here. Port Said, 27 days. We have just enough fuel. Yikes. Just enough fuel. So this one doesn't have a limit. 55. Okay. So we're going to take these two contracts to Port Said. It is a ways. Yeah, it is a ways. Hmm. But they are big contracts. 
Alright. And it's gonna leave us 26 ton of fuel. And it's pretty much filled us up. So that's pretty good. I like that. We're still on pause here, so I'm not losing the harbor money. I'm going to accept those. And then to make it all official, we have to sign her over to our ship. Okay, here we go. Now, next thing you want to do is cast off. Now, when you click cast off, you'll come up with a couple of things. First thing you want to do is pick your port, and we are going all the way down to Port Said. So, we would click that. Now our route is in. And that one, as you see, is controlled 55 days. We are only at half power 27 days away, or arrive in 25 days. So we could probably save ourselves a bunch of fuel by slowing down a bit, but I'm not going to. The other option you get is a manual or an automatic leaving a port. Manual means you're driving the ship out, automatic, a tug will simply pop you out of the port, and you'll kind of end up in the next one. So, let's go manual this time. Um, why is it not giving me a cast off? Uh, oh, I think I need a little bit of time to pass here. So... Still can't get time to run? How about ship status? There we go. Now it's lockup time. We had to get our cargo on there. I didn't realize they hadn't dropped the crates yet. Okay, they seem to have now. So let's get the heck out of here. Again, we are going to there. Now the option to cast off is available. So let's do just that. As I say, if you choose automatic, then a tug will actually pop you out of harbor. Keep in mind, uh, these are pretty hefty duty ships. So, you kind of need to think about it. Our mini-map here shows us where we're going. And... Hmm. What a weird little harbor. Okay. Oh. Clear this guy. Nice. You can use the WASD keys. And when you switch to forward. Oh, where's that guy going? Oh, I see. <laughs> and he's going to tug us out of here a little bit. Uh, looks like he's heading out of the harbor too. We might actually have to wait a little bit for this guy to... Uh... Yeah, we do. What a drag. <laughs> We've actually got to wait for this guy to come out of here. Maybe I'll get myself hitched a little better then. I'm not really a fan of the way they do that. Switch your camera around. But, it is what it is. After all, Okay, well, we should be able to uh, chase this other big boy out of the harbor. Now, this is as far out as you can go, and this is as far in as you can go. Do not bash your ship against anything. Just a word of warning, guys. There we go. We're almost ready to straighten out, because if you do damage, not only is it stupid, Stupidly expensive, as I mean you can imagine, 
You know what it's like to fix a little dent in your car? Alright, let's make your car weigh a hundred ton. Yeah. There we go, now we can step up our speed a little bit. Just don't want to come a bit this way. But the yellow dot's what we're aiming for. And as I said, you can have a tug automatically tow you out of the harbor. And then you don't have to worry about your piloting skills. Well, I can pick up a little more speed. I don't want to be here all day. Compensate for that turn a little bit. Keep, keep in mind, your uh, tail end on these guys will swing pretty wide. I don't know if any of the later ships have bow thrusters. There we go, we can open her up now. But, uh, yeah, your early ones definitely do not. So, expect them to handle perhaps just a little off from what you might uh, be wanting to go for. Also, keep in mind the more you have on for speed, the sharper a vessel will turn. And that as well is a, an actual thing if you come right off the throttle and go to turn, well, it doesn't work very well. Alright, here we go. Oh, let's just get in there. <laughs> you don't have to stop on a particular square. Once I hit this, it will take me just outside of the harbor on the other end. And then, like I said, you have a choice. You can either bring it in yourself, go down to one knot so we can just get across the border here, you can either bring it in yourself, or choose to have the tug taken in for you. The tug, of course, is 100,000 euro. Um, I based my operation in Reykjavik, there we go. And every port, depending where you want to set up your base, or most of them except for the really big ones, where it's going to be super easy to make a bunch of money, they'll all come with bonuses. And the Reykjavik one, one of the bonuses is 20% off uh, tug fees. So so no damage to the ship. Uh, it took us 4 minutes and 29 seconds to clear harbor. So there we go, thank you. Well, you can see we go back to this map, the days wind by. Ooh. Okay, we have new company contracts available. There are different types of contracts. One of these contracts we're carrying today is a timed contract, and I have this mission here for deadline. They call them actually deadline contracts. They want this to be there within a certain period of time. Now, there's also storms that can brew up. There's um, different things they may want you to either go around or decide to go through at your own peril and there we are we are into the next place the cranberry is ready to dock in port saeed so these are things you sort of have to think about when you set up for a run you know um like i have 27 ton of fuel left out of 600. now if i had to run into something that i had to go around Maybe I would have run out of fuel and had to call a tug and it cost me half of my profit to get in there. You know, these sort of things you got to watch for. The other thing it offers is occasionally on your contracts... Um, okay, this time we'll get the tug to bring us in, just for the heck of it. There we go. There. Our investor, who actually owns most of our... Ooh, fuel is very affordable. That's good, because I burned almost all of it getting here. So... We made a pr uh, profit this time on that trip of $2,620,000. Now this one, she lent us the original $8 million to start our company. She is going to eat our money come her payment time. Every second quarter she pulls payment. And yeah, let me tell you, does she pull payment? Wow. Like from there she we'd end up with like two million left if she was to take her payment so let's go to our port and have a look see that 25 ton of fuel luckily well that isn't really super good i've paid as little as yeah i paid as little as 300 something for fuel so they said fuel was really low but not really all right well i gotta fill her up uh, I'm not going to worry about 
yeah, I'm going to find a cheaper port before I do any repairs. Like I said, the other thing you can do, um, you can do upgrades to your ship if you want to. If we go to the improve ship window, you'll see that we can do things like um, Lotus Effect Paint. Okay, raises your minimum range. Or you can do Engine Fine Tuning, which will give you one knot speed overall. Or we can go up here and pick up secondary licenses. Um, legal transport of, I assume that's either chemicals or oil. Right? If you go for the second one, ah, here, now we're allowed to carry radioactive goods, etc. But that's a million bucks to improve that. And selected level is too high. I'm only a level one ship. So, But there you go. That's the whole shipping or improving your ship. As I say, you can also, from here, you can do repairs, but each, you know, repairs will take, like, if I wanted to take that up to, say, 70%, it would probably take four or five days of repairs. Now, four or five days is 17,000. Well, there's 70 grand on top of what they'll charge me for the repairs, right? So, it can get pretty expensive. Let's have a look at some contracts, shall we? Uh, counterfeit goods. Now, these usually pay really good, but like I said, they're illegal. If your ship is pulled off with these, not only will your reputation drop, and your reputation will get you into more ports and off, it's sort of a, a leveling thing. Um, not only can it kill your reputation, but you can be majorly fined, and you can lose, well, you'll lose the goods, you'll lose your legitimate goods as well, and pay a fine. So, as lucrative as those can be, I'm gonna wait till I've got a really good chunk of change, and a, ooh, look at it, there's a lot of it down here, man. Um, a good chunk of change, and I'm gonna make sure that, uh, I might just run this to uh, Hamburg. Um, and I'd like to have more than one ship so that I'm not shut down because they seize your ship and it'll sit in port for X number of days and you will pay the port fees, make no mistakes. So I think we are going to take this and take a whistle back up to Stockholm. Right on, because it's a million. Uh, it's the only one for Stockholm. Hmm. Hamburg's not that far. Uh, no, we'll just take the Stockholm run this time around. So there you go. And that's basically how it runs. Once you build up your money, you can, of course, buy more ships. Um, you can get different types of contracts. You can get company contracts where you're going to deliver a certain amount of goods over a certain period of time, but on multiple runs. That sort of thing, yeah, you really want to have at least one more ship available, right? Then you can set him up on one of those contracts while you go and, you know, just sort of cherry-pick all the really lucrative stuff like this one, a million two, right? So, now, I've got the money to do it, so let's auto-tug out this time. And we are going to... Oops. You know what? <laughs> I forgot to accept this. I'm sorry. Uh, what did we want? We wanted this. We want to accept that. Then we want to do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look. There we are. They've dropped our cargo on board. We're not running a whole lot, but it's a pretty lucrative one. So we're going to go. Uh, destination port is Stockholm. And there we go, Stockholm. Cast off, we're going to use tug assistance. So this time around, you see, we're just directly going to Stockholm. There's our little freight ship. The yellow is how much cargo you actually have, and you can go on it there and it shows you different specs, how we're doing for fuel, etc. And the white is empty. So I obviously could have carried a lot more cargo, and I probably should have picked, you know, maybe dropped that one load at Hamburg and then continued on to Stockholm and possibly even further from there. Right. So the last thing we'll do here, there we go, 
is we will manually dock here. And they give you a little bit of blurbisms about it. Population of Stockholm, 881,000. In the country of Sweden, the continent of Europe, etc., etc. Okay. And let's stretch we and get an idea of what we're looking at here. Okay. Alrighty. I think we can throw a little more speed on the barrels. And it looks like it's pretty much like a big 90 degree -er, so... So this part can be a little nerve-wracking. Like I said, these things don't exactly uh, handle like speedboats. And, ooh, <laughs> you will have things like that. Other ships that are just going to want to come zipping out of there. Now, I'm really hoping he's not going to be there too long. Increase my angle a little bit, come back off it. And we'll see how we do. Ooh, maybe. I think we're still a little light. Yeah. Drop another knot. I said the last thing you want to be doing is slamming this thing into a wall more than 5% damage and they will automatically take over and bring her into port at again huge stupid stupid costs not the kind of things that build your reputation or for that matter really really please your company owner because you don't you may get to put your name on this company but you don't own it by a long shot we were lent eight million dollars for this company to start it up we have paid back not to die. So, come on. Serious, I do not want to bash this puppy. That I think will do quite well. Let's uh, oh, uh, just a tiny bit. That should do. One knot forward, please. And I think, I think that should get us into port. I may not be the quickest, but I have yet to crash one of these things. I haven't taken that many contracts, mind you, but I usually do manually dock and undock. 80 grand's a lot of money, you know? I mean, it may not seem like a lot when you're making 1.2 million, but you pay your, you know, 300,000 worth of fuel on our last run also counts, right? That's what it cost me to fill this up the last time around, $300,000. So you add on top of that a tug at both ends at 80 to 100 grand a pop and you know you just blown a half a million dollars of your profit without you know before you've even been paid so and I think that's just about going to do her Whew. yeah perfect well not perfect, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is very little I do that would be considered perfect. But... And... There we go. 
da, 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 da. This, uh, doing these sort of things also helps your reputation a little bit, so. We are now in port, okay. And we made 808,000. Now again, if we hadn't had taken tug charges out on the other side, right? So there you are, 376,000 in fuel, 80,000, so there's, yeah. Repair price. Oh, I guess that's just your wear and tear on your ship. So there you go, we made 800,000. So cool. And here we are, we definitely need to refuel. As you can see, we've gone down a couple percent. Again, wear and tear on your ship. So here we go, 376,000 to fill her up. And... Uh, Alright, now we're in a port that's only 12,000 a day, so... It would cost us 16 days and over a million dollars. Plus 12,000 a day for 16 days to go to 100%. So... 8 days. 75%, 4 days, $300,000. Let's do that. Now we paid for it, now we gotta go through the 4 days. 3, 2, 1. Okay. Our ship is ready. <laughs> and we're at 75%, so we should do a little better. And of course, I would now go to my contracts and buy myself some new contracts and carry on from there. But I think that's going to be our little look at this for the moment. If you guys like what you see, if you'd like to see where this can go or even where it starts, leave a comment. I'm always anxious to uh, get a new series up on the channel that you guys are actually going to enjoy. Um, and there you be. It's an awesome little game. It seems to work very well. So far, I haven't run into any bugs. Um, any complaints? I would like to be able to zoom in closer, but the devs have explained that their models are actually designed at that sort of a size, and if you were to be able to zoom in any closer, they'd start to basically fall apart. Like, that is the size that they were drawn to be at that focal range type of thing. So, But beyond that, hey, having a great time with it. And, uh, it's brand new out on Steam. Well worth picking up, in my opinion. Great simulator. So, thanks, Deck 18. Good one. <laughs> Anyways, till next time, guys. This has been Species 7. Take care of each other, folks. And ciao for now.